Are you living in the same world that I am where your family is constantly pressuring you to start a family of your own but it takes way too long and seems like a hassle? Then boy oh boy do I have a game for you. Not only can you start an ever-growing family, but you won't have to worry about those terrible twos or what to get your children when they turn 132 months old, with the bonus of being able to immediately turn them into soldiers to fight in a city controlled by a handful of what is essentially three family mafia clans. Published by Spell Collectivic and developed by Chromatic Inc. comes Dice Gambit, a turn-based tactics RPG where you shape and lead your own fully customizable family of inquisitors in charge of hunting the chromatic monsters infesting the city. But what does this game look like, and should you be keeping an eye on its release? Stay tuned to find out. Oh, great city of Neotalis. Like a queen, she is mighty, enlightened, and full of secrets. Soon, you will take your place amongst the nobility, and in a city like this, you are only as strong as your allies. Dice Gambit starts you off by having you create a family, from which, totally unlike real life, more money will translate into more offspring. Three major families control various districts in the city, each with their own plans of ambition and temperament. The first game I equated to the dynamics of these interactions was that of the original Mercenaries game where you could do missions for various factions and influence how they perceived you, which led to some being outright hostile upon sighting you depending on the choices you made. I don't believe I ever lost influence of the family from picking one mission over the other, but what it does grant you is a variety of bonuses like access to more academy training that allows you to learn new abilities, or by adding slots in your family pool, allowing you to grow your family via marriage or through fast reproduction via means of instant offspring at a cost. Speaking of, one of the major families has been able to focus their time on genetics and grant you the ability to choose a married couple and generate an offspring that combines the parents' varied abilities into something potentially stronger. It was a neat aspect to see and there was always a way to retrain the character if you wanted to make them go a different route, but once again at a cost. Through this, each character is able to feel unique with custom dice, varying classes and abilities, as well as temperament. Once trouble is brewing in the city though, you must send some family members out to stop the conflict. This turns into you having to navigate between nodes of varying events, whether that be combat, delivery tasks, gaining gold, healing, random encounters that buff your units, for the right price of course, or a game where one of the family heads is in a race to see who can kill more units, which generally devolves into her hitting you more than she does the enemy. Stay on the node map for too long and your family begins to take damage for each node you land on, with the final node being a boss fight that sees you surviving an endless wave of monsters while trying to take out the boss. After all of that, you gain various amounts of XP to increase skills, and if your family's hurt, you can spend more money to help them recover, which really makes money become the backbone to so much of what makes your family operate. While the missions did feel somewhat similar after a while, I never really felt like I got bored playing them. Enemy variety was nice, but I was always distracted with some new ability my family members had access to and I was all too excited to put the pieces together on using each dice roll as best as I could. Sometimes that would mean I'd have to use a special ability die just for movement purposes instead of actually using it for its damage. And while it was rare, I really got excited when I got to use the Yahtzee ability allowing me to roll more dice if I ever rolled the same symbol 5 times. The game allows you to use a wild card side of the die to perform any action you'd like, but at the cost of filling a bar at the top of your screen. Once filled, enemies will become stronger and will hit harder, which really began to show its ugly head during the final mission of Act 1 and the demo. Due to this, Dice Gambit has moments that make you really feel like you're on the edge of losing it all. But that doesn't matter, because just as Vin Diesel says, But what's real is family. Make no mistake. What Dice Gambit presents is nothing short of a fully engaging and fun experience. Managing your family, relationships with the hiring families, pushing your luck on the maps during expedition all works so well and the combat is easy to understand, with plenty of room for growth thanks to an easy way to train your units. Package all of that with a unique art style and I believe this has a chance to be one of the early shining stars in the indie gaming world when it releases early in 2025. But that'll be it for this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and as always, be kind to one another. Oh, great city of Neotalis. Like a queen, she is mighty, enlightened, and full of secrets. If you want to succeed in this city, best you attain these virtues too. Shoutouts go to Relativity, Naughty Dog is King, Chaos, and Kamikolo, alongside all those who have subbed to the channel. I've got one or two more demo divings coming, but expect some changes to the lineup of videos, so I hope you stick around for that, and I will see you soon.